What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? Podcast about life in the music industry. I'm your host, Patrick Tarnowski. With me, as always now, is Gibby. And yeah. uh, today, Wait, we're, episode we're... three. Episode three. <laughs> Hell yeah. And today, we've got Arden and Courtney from Chicago band Double Identity. Arden, Courtney, welcome to the Woo. show. Thank you for having us. We are very excited to be here. Um, for yeah. the viewers, could you guys like, like, introduce yourselves so like they know who's talking? Yes, I am Arden. I play guitar and sing in the band. If that is relevant, <laughs> um, I'm Courtney and I sing and play drums. So you better memorize nice. those facts and our voices immediately. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> because don't if you don't, because yeah. when we're on the phone, sometimes our own family mixes us up. So that's fair, Gosh. and I mean you. Uh, our listeners and watchers, you will be tested at the end. Yeah. So yeah. have a pen and paper, you know, or you can, you know, pop a little notepad up on your phone, whichever you prefer to do, but you will be tested and graded. 100%. <laughs> and judged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will be judged. So let's get right into the, into the nitty gritty of it. You all, you released your latest EP, Talking to Ghosts, Act Two, back in October. How's the response been for that so far? It's been really cool. Um, what was kind of fun about this EP, and we've sort of, I think we saw this too with um, Act 1, you know, talking to Ghost Act 1, Act 2. I'm yeah. also slightly derailing your question immediately off the bat. No, you're good. No, you're um, good. <laughs> but it's been cool because I think what we've kind of been seeing is that, like, the the singles did did pretty well, right? And then... You know, it's always when you have, which they're both five song EPs. Um, and, you know, then you have like, okay, you pick the singles. So it's like, oh, those are kind of the strongest ones. So when people like them, you're like, yeah, you like them. Like we, you know, figured that you would sort of. So then to be able to release, you know, like the other three songs with say like Act Two, which was Fake, uh, The Rear View, and Wait, do we do? Those were the only two that were actually. I'm like, already lying. Ahead of I'm time. already lying. First question, <laughs> and I don't even know our own discography because we did three singles for that one. Um, but I was kind of nervous when we did uh, "Fake" in the rear view because I felt like they were a little bit different than um, the songs that we had kind of put out before. At least for the rear view, definitely um, it was sort of like a standout kind of slower crush song, if you will. Um, yeah. So it's been really fun to see, you know, people take to that and I think especially the rear view which I thought it was going to be fake I'm always wrong for the record I'm always wrong in what I think people are going to kind of um gravitate towards which um is a fun thing to grapple with as a person that has to market the stuff as well <laughs> um but I'm roundabouting Courtney want to interrupt me um yeah <laughs> It's it's very it's hard to measure like response because to me I'm like oh if it doesn't get like a billion streams in the first twenty four hours we've it never sucks. gotten a billion streams um, that's obviously me exaggerating but also not but um what what was kind of cool is we just played a show on Friday um at Copra Lounge and it was cool because during you can't really see stuff with the lights you know they're like right in your eyes but we could see like the first like row or so of people and i saw people like singing along to the rear view with us which yeah. hadn't well hadn't happened before because the last gig we played was before that song was out Courtney couldn't but, see it um <laughs> i couldn't see but i thought that was really cool because i was like okay that one is one of the least streamed ones like there's full transparent see here everybody our stuff does not have a billion streams by any sense of the imagination um and i know that it doesn't like reflect how good the songs are, which is something right. that's hard to grapple with. Again, derailing your question, but I just thought that it was cool to like, because I look at the stats and I'm like, okay, like people like the song, but it's not like it's not going to be like number one on Billboard, obviously. Which don't expect yeah. that ever, but like to see that people listen to it enough times that they like know the words to sing it back, like at a show, which is really cool because that's never never really happened too much to us. So. Well, and that's obvious. Like that's, I mean, that's the dream is to have people sing your that your is. music back that's to so you. So weird. I'm like um, the girls so who cool. get it get it. The girls who don't. <laughs> um, I like nothing I beats always that like feeling to... either. Mm -hmm. Just having that crowd like sing back your songs <laughs> to you. 
Hell yeah. Yeah, I always like to, especially the day of uh, a podcast, if we have a, a band or a musician on, I like to like listen through um, the discography or as much of the discography as, as possible to get like reacquainted. Fresh, yeah. And, and I think I think today alone, I listened to Act Two at least five times. And amazing. It, when those stats drop tomorrow, I'm gonna be like, thank you. On Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> those oh, are, if those, it's Spotify. That's true. If you if you start seeing uh like a spike in Duluth streams, that'll be me. Uh <laughs> amazing. But, I'm gonna screenshot uh, it and send it to you when it if it's on Spotify, if it pops please, up. Please please do, please do. Um I really enjoyed <clears throat> uh Rearview. I think that one's fantastic um i think i think the whole ep like in total is very very good um i also liked um gosh what's it yeah, I'm blanking it's on one of the names the uh yeah no um, judgment sometimes arden will start to play the track at practice and i'm like what song is this and i think it's something I, else so <laughs> i like the whichever one that's the the 2.0 was that oh you're, you're anything. anything yeah yes I like that. I thought that one was awesome. I also love that. Like I went through and I was like, so 2.0, they must have also done it before. And it's, it's awesome that you redid the song. This like, is where you're like, us, I like the original better. You but... <laughs> that yeah. one was... every, every true fan likes the original better. You really yeah, go downhill really after like... the remakes. People probably will, but I don't care because we're not going to play that one. <laughs> like, y'all I will say go Selena Gomez in the want. scene, um, My Dilemma 2.0, the little bit they added really slaps. I'm sure I, like, I don't know how many people listening to this um, are familiar with that iconic group, but um, go listen to that when you're done listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because right it's i like to listen to like you know the originals and then the like updated versions um absolutely because you always have then you have both so if you like the original you listen to that one if you so what what made you want to redo that song so that i'm really like, you know, the answer <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so we kind of feel like in some ways your anything was kind of Arden's gonna interrupt me you're like that's not true um in some ways <laughs> oh um your anything was kind of like the start of quotes start of the talking to ghost arrow before we knew what like what that was gonna be I've been trying to put the phrase talking to ghost in a song forever I'm not even <laughs> kidding I'm pretty sure it was like high school that um, I think we had a song called like 3 a.m. or something. I think there was talking to ghosts in there, and I was like, mm -hmm. it's cool, but that song was not good. Um, so <laughs> carry on. I already forgot the question. Um, why we why we redid oh. it. So basically we had that one and we worked with um like different recording engineers and producers on that. Um, and then when which fun fact, I believe that song is one of the reasons we started working with our current producer um because he heard that one that one is much of it's a very big step up from the song we released previously yeah as far <laughs> as i'm concerned anything before talking to ghosts is kind of like before you're anything yeah like you know you're anything something nice <laughs> um <laughs> is like you know just the yes yeah, so there is a there is a huge difference between talking to ghosts and small talk yes um, and I and I go back and forth because I feel like small talk, if we did it now, like knowing like just knowing more, not even the songs would change. I think it would just sound totally different because I like yeah. listen to the bones of the songs and I'm like, this song's like it's not bad. Um, it's not to like the caliber, obviously, that we're at now, but that's what's kind of cool to like see but anyway sorry to get back to your question so then when <laughs> we realized we were creating enough songs to make an ep um we wanted we originally had i'm gonna answer 27 questions within this one question we originally had i think like maybe seven songs that we knew for sure we wanted to do but we don't feel like we're in the place to do like a debut album because you can do obviously i you know you can do an album and then go back to doing eps but yeah. we didn't really want to do that because sure. it, it's like expensive to record and then like normally you don't release as many singles and it just 
made more sense for us to split it up. So, um, well, and, and nowadays it's all about the singles, you know, right, I mean, which kind of sucks as a fan. Girly, I but... love to just dive right in. You know? Unfortunately, we're not Taylor Swift where you can just like surprise drop the whole album with no like single first. Um, right. But specifically, um, to the short answer to this question is we knew we wanted to put your anything on one of the Talking to Ghosts project EP things. But our um, sound had changed even a lot from the recording of that. So we knew that like if we put it on there, you know, like the original version as it was, that it wasn't going to kind of... It would, like, sound out of place. It yeah. wouldn't, like, be cohesive yeah, with the rest sure. of it. And so we were like, well, if we're going to take the time and the money to re-record this song, we're not going to just re-record it the exact same way that we did it before because that kind of feels like a waste. Um, although some of our favorite bands have done that, so, like, no shade or anything, just, like, yeah. for what worked for us. We were like, well, how can we kind of, like, update this song and have it hopefully have make it better it, yeah but um just do like a new not grown-up version and i, I really grown up guitar for, like, in that version too because i mean recording act one even i feel like we learned so much about like songwriting and about you know like what kind of how to how to structure and write for something to be produced out um because before yeah. we just did like all like analog stuff and like i still write a lot just like acoustic guitar and then you know like go from there but um i i don't know i kind of felt like we wanted to kind of bring it up to the caliber that i feel like we were at then so that was kind of the idea act two was definitely harder than act one though we went back and forth a lot more um not well a couple songs got like replaced because they didn't suck but they definitely weren't like amazing um but yeah even like fake took a while like we knew kind of what we wanted it to be that outro it, came late too yeah well that whole structure of that song is yeah, not traditional but like even like the the verse or not the verse sorry the bridge of honeymoon phase like took a lot like i love how it is but it was like a struggle <laughs> to get it to be like where it ended up being so um it's it's effortless as everyone thinks. The bridge of that and the second verse um, of your anything 2.0, I think, were the hardest. We just go back and forth, you know. That wasn't your times. question, but but yeah, long story <laughs> short that we said three times, just because we wanted to put it on the thing and wanted it to sound cohesive. So yeah. Hell yeah. I mean it's a great answer. <laughs> we said we don't story. mind the long winded y'all. I, I have yeah. no media training, I'm sorry. <laughs> We don't have any media training either. We just we just wing it. It's cool, okay. great. Then we're all on the same page. Yeah, we're just here Speaking having a chat. Winging it. We're just here to vibe. <laughs> Speaking of winging it, you started. You guys started studying music at the age of five and started performing on stage at nine. What made you want to be a musician? Um, I don't know that I had many wants as a five year old. Or like full thought process it make me sound like I was <laughs> studying music is being very generous too I don't know that like we never did it in school or anything I mean we took lessons when we were younger um that's also like a deep cut question yeah like I appreciate that um our neighbors um gave us their old drum set when their sons didn't want it anymore and we were five and so my mom was like well either it's like a treadmill where you just hang clothes on it and do nothing or um I want to try gonna like get us drum yeah. lessons so that's how we both started playing drums and then i i think when we were eight or something arden randomly was like i want to play guitar i instead. don't remember why i don't remember why and it haunts me because i i don't get to have the fun story but um where we took music lessons then they kind of they had this program where they like put you into bands with other people and then you like played and then we just like did it like there, I don't even know. I don't. Even we remember. were too young to be nervous. You know what That's I mean? That's not true. <laughs> um, like not in the sense of like societally, like now. So yeah, the first song we did on stage was um, I love, I love rock, rock and, and roll. roll. So that right an interesting relationship with that song now. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was just kind of something that we just did. And I know that's kind of a weird answer. I don't remember there being. And I hate when people answer questions like that. So like, it just I, sort of like happened to me. I well, it. I mean, <clears throat> we just did it and just like kept doing it. And we eventually, didn't do sports. So <laughs> oh. we also didn't do music in school. We like just did it outside, and eventually, like other people just fell away because like you're 
10 years old in a band like the longevity of that Yeah, is and not then we really did we did covers there for a while, like a long time. And then, um, and we would play, you know, we did pretty good at that, I think. And then I kind of got to the point where I was like, I want to play my songs. Um, and then it was kind of this weird thing of like, well, is anyone going to want to listen to my songs? I don't care. I feel like we didn't really start playing shows with just our stuff really until after the pandemic, maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Because after the pandemic was all talking to ghosts. So we've been really lucky, I I think, say after the pandemic, to as have if it's people. not like technically ongoing. I'm like, Yeah. 2020. <laughs> Let's say that. But yeah, we've been really lucky to have the You could opportunity. just say since the start of the pandemic. Yeah, right? Yeah, we don't really have like a like a date. You know how like bands are cool and they have like, oh, established in this year? I have no idea. Because I'm like, do Did you you count just say 1999? like... That's when we were born. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll just start saying that. Um, born As, to I mean, people. as like, so for me, when I was like doing research and stuff, basically, I'm scared if as there to isn't, where you looked, if somebody like my hasn't TikTok said and like, my cringe. <laughs> if, if somebody hasn't established a, like a date, you know, it was like established in 2018, Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, I, I typically go by like the, you, you pretty much started becoming established once you released your first song. You know, I mean, obviously there's tons of band True. before that because there's always so Hmm. much more. Most people, I mean, nowadays you can literally write, record a song and start a band in a day uh, on your phone. Um, but, you know, um, typically there's a lot more before the first song comes out. But it, that's always like kind of my my rule of thumb is like you you started releasing music at this date. That's Yeah, that's smart. true. So then 2018, which Or we did 2021, not know. if we can't talk. <laughs> Well, if we count small talk, um, we did not know we, what we were doing when we released that EP at all. Like in any sense of Do we? the term, What are we doing now? I, <laughs> I don't I feel may like anyone not, really but knows what we're all doing ever. no, I look Ever. back and I'm like, why did we even I like feel... put it on a rollout? I'm like, what were we doing? But I'm like, we were we were kids. like 18. Oh my god. I'm like, I didn't know. I feel like... I feel like even if you look at, like, your promo photos and album covers, you can tell that there is a more... Um, like, you know what you're doing more now than Yeah. with the Small Talk EP. <laughs> the cover of the Small Talk EP Yeah, looks like, for yep, sure. this is I mean, your first release. I get that. yeah, I started learning Photoshop for band stuff because Yeah. we are poor. So like, <laughs> like I, you know, obviously Mm -hmm. that was what, 2018? Like I've been on and off You took, doing you had taken it. one class at school. I took one class It's like, and I had a dream and I was like, let's we've go. all. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, definitely. I think, you know, we've had a lot of growth even in the past like three years. Absolutely. two or something i'm not doing the math but um so yeah i think it is kind of cool that's why like you know we're not taking the stuff down even though we've debated it with everything reminds me of you don't listen to that so, like um Oh, I wouldn't. like see the growth You we don't don't have a cringe period like what are you doing you know like you. It's it's everyone deserves their cringe era. Okay, yeah it's okay. can we enter a second cringe era <laughs> I'm just just for kicks decided to perpetually be in my cringe era just to like cover my basis. But um that answer your, your question. <laughs> I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> I don't I don't even remember what the question was at this point. Oh, just what made you want to start What being a musician? That's what yeah. it was. Just pop Well, like that was I the don't perfect even remember that where was we're the perfect at Hannah that was Montana. a great answer, honestly. Yeah, That let's was just like give it to Hannah Montana in Camp Rock. Like probably subconsciously that's but we were I think we started before that came out. I remember I don't know. I was really excited when Selena Gomez, when as Alex Russo, when Wishes was a Waverly Place, she was playing drums in an episode Wishing would have because stayed in the song just slap, getting it slapped. flowers. But um, It's actually a good because song. there was not really a whole lot of like girl drummers. Now you definitely see more, but like at the time when To I was be little, fair, I we didn't really know. We only watched Disney, um, so I was excited. are we forgetting one of the Olsen twins in New York Minute? But I didn't watch it though. <laughs> I so I wouldn't have. I'm just uh, I didn't that's have probably that easier we were easier at that for point myself, maybe six. even. Like we watched Hannah Montana and Barney. I don't know. <laughs> not like at the same time. not not God. at the same time. But you know what I'm saying is like <laughs> yeah, the internet like was you, not what it you're was. your own person. You each get your own TVs. One can Yes. be Barney. Maybe One can I was be watching Barney. I don't know. A hundred percent.
<laughs> so we talked about Selena, Selena Gomez and, you know, Taylor Swift and all that good stuff. So what, but what were some of your personal, like biggest musical influences to that have gotten you to the point that you're at now? I would say, I think that that answer is constantly changing. I would, um, in cool. high school, wait, do you it's mean like, like cop out? <laughs> no, I'm going to give an answer. I promise. Do you mean like initially, or do you mean like throughout? It, you, well, Just, how, what you are your like, biggest however your influences heart. are? Yeah, what, you, who however do you your think heart is, like, wants your you to answer. Influence. You just oh you listen to your heart. Just no thought. Okay, well I'll still. say like when we were younger and like you know first just doing it, what we were listening to was like Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, like Selena Gomez in the scene, like Meet Miley Cyrus, um, like that. Yeah, stuff. Meet Miley Cyrus. <laughs> um, like Demi Lovato, Jonas Brothers. They're like two thousand like eight ish era. A little bit longer. Um, album. Mm -hmm. Those. I think still influence a lot of like what we do because we say now we're like oh like Disney Channel like pop punk <laughs> or something, um, which actually we, we didn't, didn't start that. we didn't start it one of our friends started calling us that and we just like ran with it but um, I think maybe even when you're anything came out is when he started saying I it so. but so I think we like compare ourselves to that a lot because I think like subconsciously that shaped our music taste young but i mostly listen to pop like straight kind of like pop music like taylor swift like sabrina carpenter like i definitely like have variety in there as well yeah. like i'm sure i don't mention this but like against the current like the summer set yeah like, voila. Well, when, um when we hit high school i think it was around freshman year i somehow found out about against the current and i thought christy costanza was so cool i mean i still think she's really cool i'm not trying you know um, right. <laughs> that was the first band that I liked enough and was old enough to start going to shows. So then they were like our first non Selena Gomez yeah. show um, concert. <laughs> so kind of through them, and there used to be this app. I don't know if you guys remember. It was called Eight Eight Tracks. Yep. That was like the only. There was YouTube and there was that to listen to music. Okay. You know. There was no spot was it legal? I don't know. <laughs> no, it was. It was. Um, I just got mine from you. I made you like transfer them to yeah. me. Yeah. So I didn't so know I how to do it. I would listen on there. That's how I found like the summer set. And then I really got into Five Seconds of Summer in um, high school for sure. Um, so I would say them. And even though their sound has changed a lot, I think it's really cool how they've managed to, you know, get so many different sounds out of their discography. And yeah, like, Somerset, um, always Taylor Swift is just like a blanket statement, yeah. Um, which that's like everyone, I'm so thinking. that's not so uh, Maisie Peters. I know she's not pop punk, but if y'all know who she is, it, do, it does not have does, to be pop yeah. punk. If, um, if you, I literally was just telling somebody, yes, on yesterday's like podcast that, um, uh, I was jamming to Dolly Parton. It, it doesn't have to be pop punk, it's okay, whatever country like, music you, is so close to pop punk, though. Like that was our running joke with All on You when we were recording it. We were like, it's a country song. Like if you take any pop <laughs> punk song and make it acoustic, it's almost a country song. Con anyway. Controversial statement. Yeah. Um no, that is definitely uh but I'm thinking bands. A country oh, not wrong. It, it, it's not wrong. I fully support that. If you think though. about it though, like if you're you'll hear it. Um yeah, I jokingly like um called my country playlist farm emo. Yes, See, exactly. exactly. Like I feel like any good pop punk song is like this close to being country. It's a, a compliment. I know many people would not take it as a compliment, but it's country meant songs are good. No, I know, but like I feel like people either love country and hate everything else <clears throat> or they like hate country with the burning passion. Yeah. Uh, I could agree with that. <laughs> Absolutely. I, just I feel like the internet just in general. Who else? I feel like we're missing people. Well, um, Emlyn is a good one. If you guys know Emlyn, you keep talking over me. My God, you said <laughs> I said I said the law already with Somerset and against the oh, current. I didn't hear you. Guess I'm not listening. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's that kind of covered nightly. Also, oh, um, I just saw nightly actually. Oh, so, so did, did you me? did you see nightly with Knox? Yes, I love Knox. You just Knox saw Knox. You have to They're go to a so tie dye good. event with him. Oh, like, that's cool for him. All his it's stuff slaps. Him. Yeah, I I agree. Knox has been like cons like last year he like I I so I'm a scrub. I use Apple Music, 
and it updates like uh <laughs> grow the up top, dude. the top 100 like your top 100 like throughout the year and i That's saw cool. that like all of nox's discography was in my top 100 i was like yeah that's right. he has a new song coming out at the end of the month it's i know so yeah. excited it's so good did you see nightly when um vault boy opened i was you're like quizzing him now. it was i think i might have missed that that's okay you could quiz us too yeah, 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 yeah no, just, feel free. Currently, with really what good. you're asking, you're gonna have to ask Gibby. I'm trying to look, and it's funny because like all of my recent stuff on um the Spotify Games. is mostly like the Hunger Games soundtrack, Knox, Voila, Taylor Swift, Sabrina Carpenter. It's been a big couple years for Taylor Swift, so that's to be expected. So I'm gonna reel this back really quick. This please, is please. might be a hard question for you guys. Okay. Like, this is a challenging one for you. So, earlier you said that that one of your friends had, like, calls your music Disney pop punk. So, I'm going to task you with building your ultimate dream band with Disney musicians. Ooh. Like, fictional characters or the... Or, just like, it could be, like, the Jonas Brothers, Demi Lovato, or, or it could be fictional characters. Anybody. Sky's the limit for you. Oh, gosh. Okay. I would say almost the entire band from Lemonade Mouth. Can we take the drummer from Lemonade Mouth? Yeah, like, you could take individual people. Yeah, you, you can yeah. take. Yeah. What are you not understanding? The you, 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 you want I'm Nick Jonas and someone else? Y'all, y'all pick whoever you want. All right, uh, Blake. I think that's his name from Lemonade Mouth. Um, it sounds right. It feels who right. Who was the Who was the bassist? Who was the girl? Naomi mm-hmm. Scott. Yeah, but what was her? Whatever her. Um, <laughs> um, Haley Kiyoko. Are you just naming all of Lemonade Bridget Mouth? Mandler. <laughs> well, keyboard homie is like a criminal, so yeah, not, so don't we're not him. him. Um, Selena Gomez, this is a big band; they're gonna fight a lot. Um, <laughs> who else? Who else? Connect three, connect three. But do we have to take? Okay, take Kevin. Yeah, we'll take Kevin. That's our list. Take right Allison Stoner from Camp, her character from Camp Rock, because she can do the tracks. She also has the dance moves. She's got those mad beats. Um, this is a hard question. They're all hard <laughs> questions, and you don't know how to succinctly answer. But Hannah you Montana. got yeah, Hannah Montana. We Hannah Montana. I'm just, I'm just literally just Debbie naming just people. Name, I'm like Christopher Wilde. No. Please, Christopher Wilde. Like Starstruck. <laughs> you guys know? Do you know what that is? I know. It was just the 14 year anniversary of the movie. Okay, it was a Disney Channel original movie. Christopher Wilde was like this pop star boy, and um, he ran into Daniel Campbell's character. Classic Wattpad. Love yeah, story. it was like Wattpad before Wattpad, but I'm sure Wattpad was around. Oh I no, it didn't was have around. access to the internet like that. Um, and then there, she like doesn't know who she knows who she, who he is because his because huh? her sister is like obsessed with him, but she's like, I hate this guy. But then they end up together. Rip to her sister, though. Spoiler, like, your celebrity but... crush you're obsessed with ends up dating your little sister. That's a horrible that'd sister. Be, I, that'd be rough. <laughs> like, she didn't even ask for an autograph. Yeah, if you want to date him, that's cool. But, like, you're not even going to facilitate your sister meeting him. I don't know. That's dirty. <laughs> but don't do that to me. So. Well, it was since, you it, since now me. you're also talking about Disney show premises, well, let's keep this Disney theme going what would you say uh a double identity disney show would Mm -hmm. look like Mm -hmm. have you guys seen jonas yes i watched like the first season of that it would be some sort of mix of that but it wouldn't be high school it would be like austin and ally is what you're thinking we forgot about austin moon oh my god austin moon (laughs) i love the one song the I love the no no I'm blanking I'm gonna look it up I'm gonna look it up keep talking I'm not uh, even gonna lie to you the only Disney Channel TV show I can even come off other than other than Hannah Montana and Wizards of Waverly Place is uh the Sweet Life with I Zach knew you were gonna say that yeah. I knew you were yes. gonna say it and I so, almost that's said the only, it like, I guess yeah classic I was um, a Nickelodeon kid. See, that's the thing. You, you were do. either that was the song. you were either a Disney kid or a Nickelodeon kid. I like some people are like, oh, I watch both. I'm like, so you had no loyalty as at ten years old? Like, no, it was one or the other. Um, like what? I Carly and Victorious. 
Yeah, intense. Victorious did slap though. We watched Victorious. I think it was over the pandemic. We watched it as like an adult, and it was the music it. slaps. Um, it still it holds up as an adult. Disney Channel did block me on Twitter though. So okay, our TV show would be a cross between like Jonas and Austin and Allie, and you know when you see like like indie films where they don't know what they're doing and they're just stumbling through life. <laughs> I think that it would be that. Yeah. You know, okay. just like, that's not wait. That sounds negative. I'm not meaning that necessarily. Would it be like it's like a mixture of the Royal Tenenbaums and a Disney Channel show. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's funny, and then you're like, "This is ridiculous," but it's also fun. there'd anyway. be no acting involved. It would just be cameras following us around, saying stupid things, like why and laughing she, about why internet screen memes, time, and then bursting into song. So high, yeah, yeah. That's a terrible premise for a show. It would, but <laughs> it would the pilot would not get picked up. No. But you get canceled after the first season. Exactly. Wait, did y'all hear about the Wizards reboot? I, I heard. Well, I did not look much into it. Okay, listen. This is my unsolicited <laughs> opinion, but if, David Henry for people, this. It's okay. With so the Taylor premise, Swift. supposedly, I think they filmed the pilot, so it's probably like a go is that Justin gave up his wizard powers to be with his wife, and he has two sons, and then there's going to be, like, a girl that, like, shows up and needs help or something. They're obviously mirroring the original series, but... Um, Listen, he's such a girl dad to me. As, I don't know. As much... I, like, almost exclusively read romance books, so you think I would be down for the, oh, like, he gives up his powers because he loves her. No. Did we okay. watch the movie? No. Yes, we did. Would he do that? Good luck convincing me. He would not. <laughs> I want so, Bridget Mendler as his wife or no one at all. So that's yeah, my didn't, two like her and Mason cheat on their look. I can forgive it because I was a child. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't have the I didn't have any knowledge of the real world. They better get Greg Sulkin in that reboot. I don't care how. We have a group chat named after Greg Sulkin. Mm -hmm. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was kidding. It's so random. I promise there's a rationale behind it, but it's not relevant to this. Behind it. That's anyway, a, that's fun. <laughs> so we have one more question for you before we go on a quick break. Um, if you could give our listeners a piece of advice that you know now that you wish you knew when you were first starting your journey, what would it be? Yes. Um, that's the advice. No. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes. This is actually something that I'm still sort of learning. Like, logically, I know it, but I'm still, like, feeling it out. Is that sure. nobody else is going to be, which I'm a very, like, self-critical person. I feel like creative people kind of are. Um, But nobody else is, is going to see, like, the things that you see that are, like, the negatives or, like, the mistakes. Um, Like, especially something that I'm kind of working <laughs> working TikTok through will. That's a, <laughs> TikTok will they're mean over there but um like especially with live shows I was kind of having this conversation the other day is like I used to go into it and be like oh my god I can't mess up I can't mess up like it has to be perfect it has to be you know whatever and I think it was really near the end of last year we played a show in like September or something and afterwards I was like you know what I messed up and I'm going to mess up and that's okay like like, you can still have a fun show and put on a good show and everyone can still have a good time and have it not be perfect. And, like, I know that when I go to shows, I like it when the artist that I'm seeing messes up because it reminds you that they're just a person doing mm -hmm. it, you know? So I would say that my advice is try not to take yourself so seriously, which, like, I do still, but, <laughs> um, like, it's a process, okay? Um, you know, just to just to kind of... Just focus on, it sounds so lame, like focus on having fun and how you're feeling and, and making other people feel because I think that, you know, everybody will hopefully kind of feed off of that if you're, if you mess up and you play it off and you're like, whatever, like stuff happens, whoops, you know, or just don't acknowledge. Absolutely. And that, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, that that's more important. The experience, the overall experience is more important than any, like, mistake that you're gonna make and most likely people won't remember and if they do so what like it's not the end of the world that's the topic of heart and soul from camp rock 2 
Um, it is. I can't think of the line right now. But you know what I'm talking about. Um, I would say, what would I say? This is going to sound super cliche, and if I was listening, I'd be like, oh, my God, shut up, Courtney. But I'm going to say it anyway. Um, is that, like, the people around you aren't your competition. Like, so fish are friends, not food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to derail my thought. I'm but, supporting um, my thought. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We've kind of seen, I feel like, people... And this sounds so stupid, but, like, forget, like, where they came from. Not that you have to stay best friends with everyone who you, like, come up with or whatever. But, like, I don't know. Once you start getting traction, don't act like you're better than everybody. Because you're not. You're not. Nobody, have... no, no one person is better than another person. Right. So, um, that's probably, I'm like, that's just, like, a pet peeve of mine. No, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I would say just, like, do your best to support everyone around you because everyone's just trying to do something that they enjoy. <laughs> and the world's hard enough. <laughs> so just... And don't compare yourself to everybody else. I do that all the time. So I can't take my own advice. But if you can nip that in the bud when you're starting out, <laughs> you'll be better for it. <laughs> Absolutely. And first off, none of that's just cliche. None of it's silly. None of it's stupid. It's all great advice. Um, thank you it's, it's but... hard to not like it, critique yourself and want to be perfect uh, one of the best I think one of the best things it sounds like you do as well one of the best things about a live performance isn't the perfection it's the entertainment it's the, the performance if you wanted to hear perfection that's what the fucking CD is for that's what, that's what the record's for streaming you're saying that because I feel, That's... I feel, I, I you feel like to the CD. Then. I, yeah, yeah I feel like I've said that before. I'm like, if you wanted, if you wanted to sound exactly like the CD, then go, go on Spotify. I like <laughs> when it doesn't. It's sound right the same. there. It's right there for you. But um, I'd rather like not jump around because I'm seated. But like you know, like jump around behind the drum set or something instead of like be so worried about like hitting every single note like perfectly because that's not as fun to watch. Or to do. Right. Or to do, yeah. And, and, you know, like, bands that go absolutely crazy and are spinning around, jumping around, you can't play fucking perfect and do that. You can have right. one You're or in the a circle, other. Something's got to give. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's okay. Like, that, like, I'd prefer to have my concerts be fun and, you know, I don't need it to sound exactly like the record. That's what I have the record for. I came to see them have fun and to perform and to enjoy what they're doing and not so worried and and focusing on the perfection of the performance. Yes, 100%. That's great to hear, too, that other people think that. I think most people do. You know, I think most, most people feel that way. And realistically, most people don't notice when you screw up they don't know you know it's like you're like you know your musical inspirations like taylor swift her dancers her fucking backup musicians they all fuck up from time to time no one is perfect well wasn't there that one grammy performance i think it was the grammys where she like cried afterwards or something because she like messed up on this one note and you listen back and like if you're really really listening like you can maybe tell that it was like not perfectly on pitch but like you don't notice it at all and it's like that just derailed her night (laughs) and everything else is like that was great like so if you feel that way so do they you know like professionals they all feel that they all want to be as good as possible especially if under a high pressure scenario such as you know a, an award, award show yeah you know you <laughs> so don't worry you're not alone but the people in the audience as you even pointed out they don't they don't notice unless you do a really really poor performance let's just say like mgk let's just say it let's just throw it out there um he did a, a very poor live performance it's okay it's okay he still did it. He did it. He went out. Fucking, he did his business. And he sold millions of records. So, 
I mean, there's like the vulnerability just in getting out there and trying to do it in the first place that like most people don't even have the guts to do. So it's like if you're going to sit there and judge someone for getting up there and messing up, it's like, what does that say about you? It's to get up there and mess up than get up there and play perfectly. So yeah, you're brave. You're brave. Hashtag. Hashtag brave. You're doing it. (laughs) So on that note of being brave, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our next segment. What's up, friends? We're super stoked to tell you that we just partnered with G Fuel. And let me tell you, there is no more pop punk beverage on the market right now than G Fuel. G Fuel keeps you energized, focused, and hydrated. If you go to gfuel.com right now and use code unsigned pop punk, you're going to save 20% off your entire order. You can get it in the tub form and have 40 freaking servings of flavors like Rick and Morty's Unstable Portal Fluid, which is a delicious strawberry limeade, or get something in the can form like Sonic's Peach Rings or Crash Bandicoot's Wumpa Fruit. Go to gfuel.com and check it out for yourself. Let us know what your favorite flavor is. And once again, don't forget to use our code Unsigned Pop Punk to save 20%. It's a heck of a deal, man. And we're back. Thanks for thanks so much for sticking around. We're hopping into the next segment of the show, the food for thought segment. Oh yeah, it's where we do. You know, everybody loves food, so we're, it's the most one of the most universal topics I think you can have. Like everybody eats. Yes. Everybody's got their own opinions. Definitely that one for sure. <laughs> so. I you know this one so I'm gonna ask one really quick, Gibby, because they are okay. from Chicago, right? Okay. And I have to ask this no matter what, every time, every Chicago guest, every time, ketchup on hot dogs. Where yeah. are we at? Yeah, I'll do it. Usually, I feel like I usually have mustard, but I'm not like opposed. I know that like people are like jail, prison, if you do it, but. Um, I don't speaking my ever... truth, that's I'll either put ketchup on it only or mustard on it only. I don't like load it up. I'll have a pickle on the side. <laughs> I don't like it, <laughs> but like I don't, I don't like have all the garnish. On the rare chance that I eat a hot dog, I think it's just plain. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> we have the wrong you ask these questions. Dry bones, huh? Yeah, I'm not like a big hot dog girly. Um. But next time I eat one, maybe I'll put ketchup on it and see if it makes it better. I don't think I would mix ketchup and mustard together. That sounds Ever? gross to Aren't me. You I enjoy ketchup and mustard on my hot dog, but... Maybe next Isn't time I'll try point? it. They're like peanut But I'm also not from Chicago, and I won't get shot for uh Well, see, we're from the suburbs. suburbs. Chicago we're, we're like the suburbs, so I feel like... I don't know You're if that's a, a safer. or not. Yeah, we go to Chicago <laughs> for shows, and that's about Got it. it. And I'm like... Our dad's going to be our Uber driver. So we just <laughs> dropped off and picked up. It was a good time for me. And the places we go do not sell hot dogs. So, no. That's so fair. French fries. Yo, okay. So I know about food. I have to say this. Um, I don't know if it's oh the same. Goodness. I don't know where you guys are located or if all the House of Blues are the same, but the House of Blues Chicago has the best chicken tenders. Oh, I haven't <laughs> eaten best. at the House of Blues in Houston yet, but. Arden doesn't even to. dip them in anything. I don't know. Just I don't the chicken tenders. The of the gr- it's just the chicken tenders. Leave me alone. It's cat. It's disappointed. It's I can good tell. Food. On his face. Um, that whatever. No, no. I'm I'm just listening. He's that intrigued. first balcony, whatever the bar is on the first balcony the, at, at House of Blue Chicago, they have the best chicken tenders. So I really want to play a show there one day and get them to sponsor my chicken tenders. <laughs> they're they're not expensive, but like. You know, it'd be fun. For being yeah. a venue that sell like for food, for being a venue that sells food, their their food's pretty reasonably priced. Yeah, and every time we go, I, I honestly think I've only been to a House of Blues like twice. So, see, I we, don't have one near me. So, we went there kind closest of one long. to me in Chicago. Oh, okay. I've been to the Chicago one a couple times, but no chicken tendies. No, I never. I can't say I've actually we there, gotten like, chicken the, tendies from them. We were there. Jeez, three, times? four times last year, four I think. Times? Which was a well, Josh. Was that last? Wait, year? five. Oh my god, Joshua Bassett. Oh, uh, and I forgot to use my twenty percent off coupon. Water so Parks, there. Sabrina Carpenter, Maisie Peters. Yeah, and wow. I got you. Was that Water Park show at like the beginning of the year? 
It was wasn't it like May. Were you there? Were you I there? was there. Yo, oh that was like one of the last Chicago shows I went to before I moved to Texas. Dude, I'm so mad they're not hitting Chicago on their Sneaking Out of Heaven tour. So I'm thinking maybe they're playing Lala, which doesn't help me because I want to <laughs> see the I truth. Set. I hate that. I hate when they have to skip their normal tour because of Lala. Fills me with rage. Because mm-hmm. I'm not a Lala Palooza <laughs> girly. I'm scared of that many crowds. And then everybody's I'll play there. Don't get me wrong. But sure, yeah. like to go to Wisconsin. And I'm like, dude, why? No. <laughs> no wisconsin like there it's i i grew up in, or i didn't grow up in wisconsin i lived in wisconsin i was traveling down to chicago for shows um went to milwaukee for shows madison for shows honestly i feel like the chicago crowd is like way more rowdy than the wisconsin crowds so i would probably be chill i'm not i'm not a rowdy no, I'm like, I, I will stay. I want to. I'm, I'm so boring. I'm like, I want to stand there and watch you. And if you're like, jump, I'm going to be like, I don't know if I can do this. I got a bad knee. Um, I, can't jump. I do this. I'm just like, these are my knees. I'm just. Yeah. yeah I'm like, See, then you, you, you want to go to a Minnesota show then? Cause that's, I'm in Minnesota and you know, we're the, chill. we're the land that's of the niceness and, uh, you know, we're just chill over here. Good. Good. I think it depends on like the show. Like I know water parks crowds are kind of don't rough. give me a mosh pit i'll cry um, that's why i like to be up and then you can see and then you can sit you go to the bathroom you have to be waiting. i'm really really yeah. short so if i'm not like front row i can't see um, yeah that makes sense so short and bad eyesight anyway yeah, okay but like yeah go to the go to wisconsin thing i'm like it's not just going though because that's like i think the park show is like two and a half hours away if it like to some people as well nothing. i know i know <laughs> to but that's not to us and then it's like you have to stay overnight, and I'm like, at this point, it's all resale, so it's already more expensive than it was gonna be. And I was like, we didn't go there for Sabrina Carpenter, or not? We're not going there for water parks. We were like 15, so you need to let me go. No, last <laughs> or anyway, you were gonna say something. You just but, to to me, um, uh, where I lived, I had to go to Milwaukee for most shows because those were like the closest shows, and that was like a two-hour drive for me. Every okay. time, but I would make it there and back every time, in got, like the same got night. Drive down, and then <laughs> Chicago going to Chicago shows was like a three and a half hour drive to meet for me. Sometimes four. Jeez, that's a lot. And going there and back same night, worth it, worth it. See, now I feel like a loser because I'm like, oh my god, two and a half hours one way. Okay, I need my daily nap. <laughs> but to be fair, if you got, if I was in Chicago, I probably wouldn't be making those drives. Because I'm like, because yeah. you get all the shows there regardless. Yeah, usually, and I'm the only person I know that likes water parks. So I just kind of drag Courtney with me, so you know, <laughs> it's a lot of money to spend if you don't want to go see somebody anyway. Not that whatever sure. water parks take us on tour, please. But um, anyway, I'm gonna next question. Yeah, food, <laughs> food. <laughs> all right, um, which food or vegetable would best describe your music? Ooh. I feel um, like you should have just made it even more. Di- no, let's screw that. Let's make it more difficult. You can oh, only. They already so- had a challenge with that. Okay. 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 Step up. All right. Just vegetable. You can only do what vegetable would best describe uh, your music. You know, it's funny. I think when I wrote this down, I meant to put food, fruit, or vegetable, but I was thinking of yeah. Food. That would make that makes the most sense. <laughs> I but don't now know why it's you can like only it choose right vegetables. So tomatoes are that's out because the they're vibe. a fruit. Yeah. I wouldn't have picked tomato anyway because that's like a connotation of like people throwing tomatoes. And that would mean <laughs> you don't like it. Would have picked an apple because the tea is juicy. Um, <laughs> the, tea is juicy. <laughs> the tea is juicy. Yeah, that's a phrase. Um, you, can, you can juice a carrot. Yeah. You, you can. You can. It's not good, but you can do it. Wait. Is a beet a vegetable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does not have vegetable vibes though. No, but like like Why when you beet? crush it, it it's stains red. everything. Yeah, it like stains stuff red. It looks like blood. Ooh. Okay, I'll I'll second. We don't that. really have anything about blood in our songs, but like red flags and roses. Fucking red. emo though, man. <laughs> yeah. So emo. Not like a certain vibe. <laughs> it, to it. it stains everything. You can't wash it off ever. There we go. And speaking of and like 
if you were, it would make even more sense if you guys were Nickelodeon fans, because yeah, you know, yeah. Doug, the show Doug was all about beats. We there was this beat band. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've heard of it, but I definitely no, that's a nineties shit. That's like a that's a nineties show. Part of nineteen ninety nine. Just, just right in the end there, sneaking <laughs> well, in. Well, then you 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 missed out on a great time. No, honestly, we did. I feel like there are some shows that, like we we just were sort of old enough to hop on like the High School Musical train. Even like yeah. not even the first movie. I think we kind of came in around the second movie, and like we just never looked back and caught See? Twilight. We were like in that sweet spot of like straddling the cultural the phenomenon. Line. Yeah. So I was lucky where, like, I was, like, in the 90s, I was, like, a Nickelodeon kid because, like, that had everything. It had Rugrats. It had all the shows. And And then, like, early 2000s, it was all Disney from there on out. Well, that was, like, what? uh, That's a Raven, Lizzie McGuire. Yep, yep. How did I say Lizzie there? Lizzie McGuire. sounded like Lizzie. Lizzie McGuire. um, Lizzie McGuire. Sweet Life. Um, It's about hot dogs. What? About hot dogs? I said <laughs> Glizzy McGuire. It's just about oh. hot dogs. Did you know that they um supposedly like when it was Hannah Montana Forever and then like Sweet Life on Deck, that's so it was classified as a new show. So they yeah. Have to- D- yeah, Disney and Nickelodeon were both notorious for either canceling a show after the third season or rebranding it so they didn't have to pay more. Bunch of snakes. And as a kid, you're like, oh, that's different. They're did changing you, the name. And as you, an adult, you're like, ooh. Did you also know okay. that um Dylan and Cole Sprouse pitched the whole thing for an like an another season of Sweet Life where they would like pass the reins, sort of, and they kind of just laughed him out of the room. And then they were like, Oh, here's our new idea. And they basically took their idea but made it worse. And then repitched it to them. <laughs> and then repitched it to them. And they were like, No, we're going to college. To be, like, to be in that room. I love that. They repitch your idea. Well, that actually has happened to me before. Not in that like same, obviously like Disney Channel gaslighter. But <laughs> it's always there. funny to have someone like regurgitate your idea back to you, and you're like, you didn't love it when I said it, but when you said it, it's suddenly Trendle. different. That was now it's funny. good. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. It's that it's that one friend where like no one hears you say a joke but that friend mm-hmm. says it back says it louder and everyone's like ha, ha, ha. yeah and you're just yeah. there like i said that <laughs> wait a minute so so ne- this this next question is not super deep but we're just gonna put you on check here a little bit and All see right. and see like if you we're got gonna any, need you, we're gonna need you to, to pull up your phone about we're gonna need you to pull what's up your the phone last one. thing what's the last thing you ordered from a food delivery app. Oh, nothing. Like, nothing. We never we, use we don't use those. Dang, so, I thought that would have been a good question. Easy question. <laughs> I guess the closest <laughs> thing is like we'll order Domino's online, not on an app, <clears throat> but like on line. Either that or Portillo's. But we go and pick it up. So <laughs> I don't know if that counts. <laughs> yeah, I think. that's fair. I know that uh, Gibby from time to time is quite the the user of the DoorDash. Oh yeah. I feel I like it wouldn't be able to it. justify the price of the delivery. You have a gift card. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't used it. She does. Because I found out yep. that you can order it and still pick it up. <laughs> but. I, no, I, I get it. I, like, part-time DoorDash, and, like, for work, and uh, I don't I don't order DoorDash. I ain't got that kind of money. Right. Yeah, like when you, I see people paying like double for their thing, and I'm like, I'd starve. Like, I, well, <laughs> the thing is, is like, yeah. like I said, I guess, like, I obviously, I have the money, I could totally do that. Gibby could do the, but for me, it, it's just like, because there's a lot of, it's a lot of, not so awesome people out there that are like, we'll order it, but won't give you a tip, or won't give you a good tip, like mm-hmm. or a, a just a decent tip. And if I'm gonna do that, if I'm gonna door it, I'm gonna give you a good tip because you're working. Yeah. You're working for right. it. And that I don't have I don't have that extra five dollars. Right. So I'm like, so in that, then I'll just want. go get it myself instead of yeah. having to like that's how we look at kind of band stuff too. Is I'm like, if I can't pay you what you deserve to be paid, then I'm gonna find a way to do it myself because that's not fair. Right. You know, so because right. the thing that 
a lot of people, I, especially when it comes to like the you know those kind of apps, it's like it's a mm -hmm. luxury. It's not a right, you know. <laughs> like if you can't afford to pay the way that what it costs, don't do it. Right, or that's then, like, then make something yourself at home. <laughs> like, even when we'll get, like, free app stuff for, like, free delivery, say, like, from the grocery store or whatever, we just don't use it because, I mean, we're pretty close. But I'm like, it's, like, they're not getting compensated for that then. Like, miss me with that. I don't know. No, totally. So, that And like, that's why you would want to, like, for a delivery, you would want to make sure that you're tipping the person that's bringing it to you. Mm -hmm. Well, if because if you're not getting charged for it, which is fine, because like this, the, that's fine. The store is still that's getting right money. Up. They're just the delivery fee from like Uber Eats or DoorDash or whatever you're using, Instacart, whatever you're using. They're taking the charge off. So Instacart or whatever is not getting it when it's just fine. You know, they, they get plenty. Yeah. <laughs> They're not hurting. <laughs> they ain't hurting. Well, don't you have to like okay. pay for all your own gas and stuff too? So it's not like you're anyway. <laughs> the whole We're like the gig economy. <laughs> yeah. We can go so, on for a long time. So we've had a lot of Disney talk this this whole episode. We ain't done. We ain't done. So I want you to think about all the Disney movies, Pixar movies, like anything you've watched, right? What is a dish from a Disney movie that you want to try to eat? Like, for me personally, it's Kronk spinach dip from The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, well, that's a good one. A good question. Why was my first thought the Froyo from Princess Protection Program? <laughs> that's not a dish. <laughs> it could be that. That could sure. be it. I, I'm trying to think. Of, I like, instantly what... thought of Ratatouille, but... Me too, as well. That Why was... would I want food made... I'm... <laughs> Made by a rat. No, I was gonna say by a ginger, but I don't oh, actually shit. believe that. <laughs> it just like popped in my head. Um, it's gonna get us canceled. I'm kidding. Um, I have. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. My brain's like, there's gotta be spaghetti in that movie, but that's really in the tram. Yeah, I, I was guess... gonna say this lady in the tram. They ate spaghetti. It looked yeah. really they did good. Eat spaghetti. And the See, pilot of Wizards, Selena, like, throws herself into a, like, chocolate the fountain. Chocolate fount yes, I think I'm that's changing the pick. The chocolate <laughs> fondue fountain thing from Wizards. Miss me with that. I don't like chocolate at all. That's heaven. Controversial opinion, again, that people get very they upset do. about. They get mad at me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I It's not, I can't control whether or not I like the taste of it. That's um, fair. Absolutely. Yeah. But I... When it comes to that kind of food, like that, the Dis I don't know if it was a Disney movie or not. I think it's like Fox or something like that. But from Hook, I always get brought back to, you know, it's Peter Pan, so it's still kind of Disney. But it Hook, when they eat the imaginary food, like I always get brought back to that because it just looks so fucking good. The imaginary food. <laughs> it's imaginary. But then, like, because when he, Peter can finally see it, and he sees it, it's so colorful, and it looks so awesome, and I always I always wanted to eat it. I say that counts. Yeah, I think that counts. It's Disney adjacent. It counts. Yeah, Disney, Disney adjacent. Yeah, that's why I threw in, like, the Pixar stuff, because that's, like, sure. Disney adjacent stuff. Yeah, now I'm going to be, like, paying attention to the fictional yeah. meals. That um <laughs> oh in good luck Charlie, what was the name of the chicken place? It was like a McDonald's like parody. PJ, he worked there. It was was it like cluck nugget or something? <laughs> it wasn't that, but it was, it was something uh similar. Uh well you look it up while we because I'm literally Quicky Chicky Quicky Chicky <laughs> Quicky Chicky. I, lo I like actually it. love that name for that's a great name for a chicken restaurant. They should make a pop up. <laughs> they should. They should make a spin off that's just a sitcom that he's working there. Yeah. That'd be good. Disney, get him on the phone. <laughs> Come on, Disney. All right. Getting million dollar ideas here. Yep. They better not be watching the show and stealing. They could watch it. Yeah. Back. A yeah. <laughs> back. What if it was something completely different that was worse? <laughs> All right, but that's it. That's the end of our food for thought segment. Now it's time. 
We're going to hop into our rapid fire question segment. Friendships will be tested. Rapid fire questions. You're just going to speak from the heart. You're going to shoot from the hip. Literally, whatever that first thing that pops into your head, you just you just Wrong go problem. for it. <laughs> trust yourself. Trust your heart. Okay. All right. You'll never go wrong. Yeah, you probably, you still could go wrong. Your heart <laughs> really the really sentiment bad. is still nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Monster energy or rock star? Wait, is neither an option? I don't drink energy. Absolutely. Okay, neither. Oh, neither. I'm not a caffeine girly. I don't have caffeine. It's That's Again, fair. controversial opinion. Um, That's okay. Wise, you're just healthier that you're just healthier and better than the rest of us. That's okay. I have my emotional support water bottle with me at all times. <laughs> um, yeah, no, na- name wise though, I'll say Rockstar. Um, I'll yeah, say- I mean, mm. neither is okay. Yeah, neither okay. is a good op- yeah, neither, is, neither, neither, neither neither is an acceptable Final answer. answer. <laughs> Buzz it all in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> pop punk or emo? Pop punk. Pop punk. This is going to be so easy for you. Taylor wait, wait. Swift. I was going to say swap it. So they don't just instant lock it. Oh, well, it's too late. Taylor <laughs> Swift or John Mayer. Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. You think we'd yeah. pick a man, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, Taylor Swift. It's me. Ab- absolutely. Skinny jeans or baggy pants? Skinny jeans. Yo, um, I'm going to go... I would, ooh. <laughs> you rapid, gotta just say what, breathing say what comes to mind first. Um, it would, it would, it would. I'm kind of in my baggy pants era, but I'm basically wearing skinny jeans right now. So I think I have to say skinny jeans. Y'all, remember, do you guys remember jeggings? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like that, I know, like, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I know when that when we were that, in uh, middle school. Most so, pe- like ladies usually would they like boy, yes, us men didn't typically have jeggings you didn't have your own pair but you were aware of the era i, I was so aware I have joggers of joggers however are pants looking however right. once again i am old enough to uh admit and i'll admit this live i don't care uh Speak your you know, truth, before Dad. they made skinny jeans for 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 men like you had to in order to have those skinny jeans, you had to go buy girl pants. And yeah, I buy boy pants, so <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's real that, pockets. It's that's the way, and that's the way. Uh, that's the way we used to do it back in the day, which was a Wednesday. Um, <laughs> but no, it was like in the like early two thousands. They didn't they didn't make skinny jeans for men, so you had to buy girl jeans. And so when they did, did they brand them as skinny jeans for men? No, I think it was just they. It just made it. It, it, it was it just, just like popped up oh, one check day. It out. I only asked because like, skinny jeans. It bugs me when I go to like Bath and Body Works or whatever, and there's hand sanitizer, and it's like for men. I'm like, oh, okay. What it's is like, it? Men Sandalwood? Have skin too. Yeah. Like, Oak? <laughs> yeah, it's like Oak like scent <laughs> because us men we only want fucking wood smells and leather. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to like nice smells. Actually, it's. Yeah, I don't like flowers. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no bright colors, um, or anything. Just Absolutely like, not. I only it, neutral colors or no black, emotion at all. Yeah. So nope. we don't have emotion. Okay. <laughs> this one so I much also for think rapid we fire on our end. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. This would be ve- no. You're good. This would be very easy as well. Disney Plus or Netflix. Netflix. Ooh. Ooh. I have both too. We have both. Netflix. Bold. Uh Julian the Fans. Okay, yeah, that's true. I'll say but Netflix for Julian the Fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stuff Disney Plus crust? Or Marvel. Sorry. Yeah. What what? No, you're good. Stuffed crust or deep dish pizza? Mm, Neither. I think mm-hmm. the between the two, I'd probably say deep dish because sometimes like the stuff crust. I'm gonna explain like my the, answer. Thin crust is better than the stuff deep crust. Dish is sometimes like too much cake. cheese, and one would could argue that there's a lot of cheese on deep dish as well, and they would be right. But I don't know. I feel like I've never been like overly in love with a stuffed crust pizza I've had. So 
That's fair. I mean, I, I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, feel bad that you haven't had one that you've loved. No, I honestly, I think okay. I had it once from like maybe somewhere like Domino's like 15 years ago. So it's not like there's a lot of them, but I haven't taken the risk again. <laughs> and normally, like That's I've fair. been crust girly. And if my dad gets the stuffed, or I'm sorry, not the stuff, the deep dish, then. I but like, I, I like it from good. Giordano's, not from Lou Malnati's. Um, that was Giordano's good. Giordano's is very good. <laughs> But I know a lot of people love it. I just didn't love the sauce the time I had it. So stuck with me, you know. That's all right. That's Never all right. forget. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Vans or Chuck Taylors? I don't wear either. I don't think I ever have. Wow. Can I say, can I say Converse? I literally well, that's like what yeah. Chuck, Ta Chuck Taylors are converse. Yeah. Oh, so. so Pat is old school and thinks it's the 80s and 90s, so still calls it Chuck Taylors. I thought it was converse. Yeah, I I'll be honest. Converse Chuck then, Taylor All Stars. Then Chuck Taylors. I, yeah, I, I have, have one pair of those. I have the little like platform. I'm not going to lie to you, Gibby. You are correct. Um, <laughs> I completely forget that they're called converse. No, but I also should have. Everybody known just that. calls them Chucks. Yeah, that's why I was yeah. like, okay, what is the tail? Like, I knew it, but I wasn't confident. So definitely, I think, I'm not. I don't go necessarily because something's name brand. I'll go like a knockoff because it's cheaper. Airwalks. Usually, like some Airwalks. Yeah, I the main gym shoes I use are like slip-ins, <laughs> Skechers, because I'm just that cool. Um, that I wear those. <laughs> are they Velcro too? They're not Velcro. But they do have fake laces. So they really? I didn't know I that. So I think fake, so. what are fake laces? Well, like, you know, there's like laces on it, but you don't actually like untie and tie them. They're just, oh. It's just so it looks less Why should yeah, it's decorations. I mean, no, no they're hate, really comfy. No hate to slip ons. <laughs> I've had them a long time. Gushers has like legit slip ons where you just like step into them. I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> like I said earlier, I'm like a very <laughs> small human. So like most people like shoe sizes Shopping and women's usually go down to like six and i'm like a five five and a half it depends okay. so it's like it's, a, it's it's sometimes i hate shopping for new shoes um not like i don't have enough but i hate shopping for new ones because it's always like just too big but sure i get yeah. you if anyone All wants right. to make custom shoes <laughs> we got one more question for you okay ready the all-american rejects or the offspring? All American rejects. Um, I'll say all American okay. rejects, but once again, I'm gonna get a lot of haters. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it <laughs> at that. I don't need to explain <laughs> that I don't listen to either. You just did. Really? So, um <laughs> we've already established in this podcast what my music taste is. So Courtney will not <laughs> listen to new music unless I make her. <laughs> it's um maybe that's true. I don't know. Sometimes. Um, I, I just listen fair. to the same songs over and over and over until I get sick of them. Like, on repeat all the time. I mean, I I know you're just saying new music as, like, any uh, like new anything artists. new. But, like, the yeah. first new thing that popped in my yes. head, I was, I was going to say, like, it would be hard-pressed for anyone to say that the All-American Rejects or the Offspring are new <laughs> yeah. in any capacity. No, yeah, 100% <laughs> new to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which, there was somebody that I was like, you need to listen to them. And you're like, no, I don't want to. And then... Was it Knox? <laughs> might have no. been Knox. It no. might have been Knox. And Ma De yeah, Maisie. Um, I'm right all the time. I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm not too proud to admit when I'm wrong. So... <laughs> Well, that's it. that's it. You did it. You that's finished it? the podcast. We won. Now, yeah. You won. <laughs> um, now, now's your chance. Let everybody know what you have going on, where they can find you, and what's next for Double Identity. Ooh, okay. Well, number one, as soon as you're done listening, or if you're not like watching it, and you can still play it on your phone, um, go to Instagram, TikTok, look up at Double Identity Band. Follow us there. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know that you found us from here um, because that automatically makes us best friends, obviously, and we need to know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, literally anywhere you listen to music, when um, people find out you're in a band, they're like, oh, well, where can I like hear it? I'm like, literally oh, anywhere. Like, are you on Spotify? I'm like, yeah, yes. buddy, we're on Spotify. Yes, sir, we are. 
Um, yeah, we sure that the, are. That was the first part. Where to find us? Social media, chronically online. What was the second question? Well, we're we have a show on March first in Lockport. If this comes out, if this comes out, well, if you're on the this, live, whatever. If this well, we're live on Twitch too. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, the lock, the Lockport in Roxy, the Roxy <laughs> in Lockport on March first. We're playing with some real cool bands. Um, and it's a long set. Um, it's an hour, so we're gonna play all of Talking to Ghosts Act One, Act Two, and um, yeah, all together for the first time. So that'll be really special. Is on our Instagram. I'm and not we gonna got, try to recite it. We got a couple <laughs> couple surprises we might be working on for that. Um, so you have if to you wear Twilight merch, we'll play our song we wrote about Edward Cullen. Ooh. Um, that's a normal thing to do. Um, I've been the same person since I've been twelve. I'm just <laughs> I'm just older now. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then what's next? Uh, we're going back in the studio later this year. Um, so that that's gonna be exciting. Um. Talking to Ghost era isn't quite over. Um, I don't want to spoil spoil too much of what we got in the works. It's not an act three. I, I pretend that it is a lot um, when we're on stage. And I'm like, ooh, like is there liar? an act three? But I'm lying. There's not an act three, but there's maybe a plus one. <laughs> maybe a, a little bit um, extra. I'm being very vague and just drawing this out. But watch your socials <laughs> for when... For when that stuff goes live. Um, honestly, might spoil it at our show in March because I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we still have some exciting stuff with the Talking to Ghosts era before we finish that one out and enter the new era of double identity. Um, so catch it while you can. But <laughs> be but there. Yeah. Uh, Regret it. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see y'all at the show or online or the next podcast i don't know when everyone tunes in so that's what i have i'm just gonna keep awkwardly rambling at the end of my <laughs> sentence <laughs> well arden courtney thank you so much for hanging out with us today it was a lot of fun uh thank thanks for thanks for you know going live with us on twitch today that was that was a good time um and we're you. at once this is done we'll go and uh check on what people had to say and go from there but thank you so much everybody gibby thanks for hanging out with me today and always being my friend the super Woo. gibby the man yeah the myth the legend and uh yeah that's it we'll see you next monday bye everybody bye thank you so much for checking out the show please hit that like subscribe or follow button so you never miss an episode and thank you so much to those of you who already are Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. If you're in the position to help us grow and like behind the scenes access and exclusive shows, head on over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsignedpoppunk. Let us know in the comments who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see. Thank you all so much.